Bill O'Reilly here. Welcome to the No Spin News. Tuesday, February 8th, 2022. Stand up for your country. COVID retreating. Good news, right? That's the subject of this evening's talking points memo. First is stats, because we are stats people here. I don't know about you, but I'm so tired of speculation and conspiracies and all of that, particularly when it has to do with our health life and death. So let's let's get the stats down first, all right? So as of February 2nd, all right, last week, cases are down 53% in the USA since their peak January 15th. Okay? 53%. That's a big drop, obviously. Hospitalizations down 18%. All right. uh, On the seven day average and they're going down. Interestingly enough, deaths are not going down because those who are infected by Omicron um, and who have, you know, a poor um, immune system, older people and people who have uh, other diseases, um, they're still getting knocked down. But the mass transmission of covid is on the decline. And uh, I predicted this uh, back on January 17th. Go. This is one of those things that hits hard, stays for a couple of weeks, and it looks like it's down. Let's pray by Valentine's Day, middle of February, that this thing is on the way out. So Valentine's Day next Monday, I believe the stats will hold and get even better. Now, I'm not a genius. I mean, that's not And hard analysis, if you look at South Africa, where Omicron started and hit hard and then for some reason diminished. And South Africa doesn't have, you know, the mass vaccine uh, medical structure that the USA has. So you just say this is kind of a nature taking its course here on another strain of COVID. Anyway, so... um, The states are doing the right thing. California knocking out mass mandates for vaccinated people on February 15th. Okay, that's next Tuesday. Jersey dropping mass requirements for students and employees March 7th. Connecticut, February 28th. Students and employee mass mandates dropped. Even Oregon, crazy, insane left Oregon, is dropping mass requirements for students and employees in schools on March 31st. So Oregon can't drop it this month. Now it's got to, got to wait. So why? So let me, this is important. And I spoke on uh, the Hannity radio program today about this. And that is posted on BillOReilly.com if you want to see the discussion. COVID has become politicized as everybody knows. Everybody knows that. Okay. And the reason is There are two camps, primary camps in America. There is the liberal camp, which believes that big government control is the key to happiness in the USA. They love big government. That's the left. The right is suspicious of big government, wants more individual freedom, doesn't want to be told what to do by Washington or their state capitals. So that's, if you understand that, the two philosophies, then you understand how COVID was immediately politicized because the left, particularly the far left, okay, wants COVID to be controlled by the government. They believe the government can control COVID, which isn't true, and now we have the proof of that. Even though Biden, I guarantee, will take credit for the decline of COVID. (laughs) Biden had nothing to do with it. In fact, under Biden, COVID was worse than under Trump. Anyway, so the left believes that big government is, is the solution to all of our problems here. The right despises big government, thinks it's a swamp, okay? And they don't trust medical authorities, all of that. Now, most of us are in between you know, the, the real committed right-wingers and left-wingers. We're, we're in between. I'm a data-driven guy. I believe the medical studies that come out of, for example, Johns Hopkins. I believe that. 
Okay, now, you might not believe it. That's up to you. But I'm not a government telling me what to do kind of guy. I understand public safety and public health. All right, if you want to take reasonable precautions against COVID, I'll look at them. Reasonable. All right, so that's where we are. Um, and that is the Talking Points Memo. I think if you want to hear more on this, go to, the, go to BillOReilly.com. We have the Hannity radio program set up for you to listen to, and it's worth it, I think. All right, President Schedule, he had one thing at 145. He's going to tell people about how great our manufacturing is in America. That's it. Okay? And he had lunch with uh, Kamala. That's nice. I hope they had a nice lunch. Um, so every day I give you the President Schedule, and every day it doesn't do anything. Okay? And, and why? Why doesn't do anything? Because the people running the White House, and we'll have something on Jill Biden tomorrow, by the way, because I've been digging into this, how much influence she has there. That's tomorrow. But the people who run the show in the White House is Ron Klain and and, uh, the others, okay? They don't want Biden out there. It's obvious that every time he goes out there for press conference or even photo ops, it's a disaster. They don't want him out there. So they're not going to put anything on a schedule. They don't want questions of Jen Psaki. You know, the more things you put on a schedule, the more questions are going to be to Psaki. So they don't put anything out. And he doesn't do very much. Now, behind the scenes, maybe he's working, you know, as hard as I work. I doubt it, but it's possible. All right, one poll took a uh, study, a survey, on behalf of American Life, which is an insurance company, and ask people about their financial situation. All right, so seven in 10 Americans say they are living paycheck to paycheck, which is a disaster. If you're living paycheck to paycheck, you have no freedom. You have no options. You're in trouble. 70%. Do I believe that stat? No. I think it's about 50%. But people will, you know, they'll say things in these surveys. 63% do not think they'll reach a level of financial security in their lifetimes. It's up to you. It's up to you whether you reach financial security or not. It's how you live, how you manage your money, how smart you are. It's up to you. All right. And on average, respondents feel they would need $686 of disposable income every month to feel financially comfortable. That's income after mortgage and rent paid, Food bills are paid, insurance is paid, whatever it may be. 686 in cash. All right, then they would feel good. That's a survey. So this is very important what I'm going to tell you right now. It is not hard to earn money in America. In fact, it is easier to earn money here than any other country in the world. Because we have a population of 330 million people, most of whom consume things, all right? So there is a tremendous flow of supply and demand. But in order to make money, you have to know something, all right? You can't be dumb. You can't. If you're dumb, you're not going to make any money. You have to either know a lot and have some vision of what's happening so you can help your employer or start a business yourself, or you have to develop a skill. So if you can fix something, you can make money, good money, okay? It's not hard to make money, which is why millions of foreign nationals are crossing into America illegally every year, because it's easier to make money here, even if you don't know the language, even if you have no skill, If you work hard, you can make money. All right. So that's true. But if you have no discipline and if you don't understand that money doesn't isn't there so you can buy a Ferrari, it's there so you can acquire freedom. The more money you have, the more options you have. If you want to move out of an oppressive situation, if you have money, you can. If you don't have money, you can't. If you want to take a couple of breaks a year and go on vacation to clear your mind, okay, you can if you have money. You can if you don't. If you want to eat healthy food so you live longer, you can if you have money. You can't if you don't. You have to eat fast food garbage 
that will put you in the grave early. That's what it's all about. Is this taught in our nation's public schools? No, it isn't. All right? It's not taught at all. Life is hard. The government is not going to make it easier for you. The only person who can protect you in this life is you. So wise up, get as educated as you can, develop a skill, and you'll make money. You won't have to live paycheck to paycheck. And then when you do make money, you save it. You don't waste it on cocaine or whatever the hell else is floating around. My father said to me, you save 10% of everything you make every week. And I did. I didn't listen to him very much, but I listened to him on that. From the time I was shoveling snow, 10% went in the bank of every check I ever got, or every cash I ever got. All right, that's important. Because prices are rising, all items in the USA, everything we need to buy up 7%, going higher. Food up 6%, energy up 30%, 30% it's up. Energy, gas, heating, air conditioning, 30%, going higher. Why Biden has lost control of the economy, that's why. Didn't have this under Trump, did we? CNN, New York Times, did we? Most important thing Trump did in office in his four years was get the economy working for the American people. That is it. That was his master achievement. Okay. You know the stats. You know your own personal situation. If you are stuck in a timeshare and you haven't called Lone Star Transfer yet, what are you waiting for? Lone Star Transfer has helped more than 16,000 happy customers. They are family owned, have a 99% success rate. Their process is done legally, ethically, and quickly. I mean, does it get better than that? The team at Lone Star Transfer will keep you informed every step of the way until you are legally and permanently released from your timeshare. So don't pay another penny for a timeshare you don't use. Get peace of mind today with Lone Star Transfer. They guarantee the release of all liability to your timeshare in writing and in a specific time frame. Give Lone Star Transfer a call for a free no obligation consultation. 855-551-7066, 855-551-7066 or online at Lone Star Transfer. Com. Ukraine. So Putin's not going to do anything until after the Olympics because he's pals with Xi now and he's not going to disrupt the Chinese exposition by invading Ukraine until that's all over. And the Olympics are a disaster, by the way, because of COVID, because of China. They're a disaster. Next week, I'll analyze it further, but it's just not coming together. But anyway, if Putin invades Ukraine, Biden says he's going to slap economic sanctions on Russia that will crush their economy. And the main sanction would be to shut down this Nord Stream 2 pipeline. Go. If if Russia invades, uh, that means tanks or troops crossing the the border of Ukraine uh, again, then uh, there will be uh, we there will be no longer a Nord Stream two. We we will bring an end to it. What do you, what, how will you how will you do that exactly? Since the project and control of the project is within Germany's control, we will. Uh, I promise you, we'll be able to do it. Okay, Biden doesn't know how he's going to do it. All right, if he knew, he he would have told a reporter. Here's how we're going to do it. I know. Hello. Put the map of the uh, Nord Stream pipeline up there. Okay, so you see that the natural gas, and that's what this is all about, uh, emanates in Russia and then goes through the Baltic Sea into Germany. Okay, see that? Most of the pipeline is in international waters. Remember, it's a 12-mile water uh, barrier to each country. Beyond 12 miles is international. 
So it shows up in Germany and then it gets distributed throughout Europe. There is the Nord Stream pipeline. Now, there are two ways you can stop it. Number one, come back to me, please. Um, Germany cannot open the pipeline. Remember, it's not flowing now. This will start at the end of 2022. So Germany just simply won't open it. And that's what Biden is trying to convince the Germans to do. And really, the Germans would have to do that or they get booted out of NATO. All right. If Germany's not going to cooperate on the economic sanctions against Putin, they're going to get fired from NATO. Okay, that's what have to happen. So Germany's in a tough spot, needs the energy, but doesn't want to get ostracized. So that's number one. Number two, you could send seals into that pipeline in international waters, just blow the hell out of it. Now, that would be an act of war. And that would be ultra serious. But that could happen. I don't think it will happen, but it might. But the president of the United States doesn't know. But he promises that he'll do it. Now, I have to say, to be fair, and you know me, I am a fair man. I asked Donald Trump about this because he said the same thing in the history tour. Uh, I said, hey, how are you going to stop that? And he said, as he always does, oh, I'm not going to tell you, but I know how to do it. But if I tell you that, we'll signal to Putin and then he might do something. Okay, <laughs> that's, that's what Trump said. But I laid out the options to you, and that's what they are. Joe Rogan. Okay, I don't live in this world. I, uh, he's a guy that made his name by being an ultimate fighting guy. And then he became a UFC color commentator. So he's tied, and that's his base. That's Rogan's base. And that's huge. That ultimate fighting thing is enormous. I don't watch it. I don't care about it. I don't know Joe Rogan. I've never watched his podcast. Okay? I'm very, very busy. Now, I do know that he's extraordinarily successful. He has the most watched podcast in the world. And that's impressive. So whatever he's doing is working on the podcast level. He does three to four episodes a week out of Austin, Texas. They average two hours and 34 minutes, if you can believe it. I mean, you got 45 minutes with me. He gives two hours and 34 minutes on average. Could go longer. And he has big, huge names um, on his program. And as I said, he did very, very well. Now, a company called Spotify carries him all over the world. And now people are trying to get Rogan thrown off Spotify for two reasons. Okay, number one. He brought on a guy named Dr. Malone, who you've seen on Fox News as well, who is dubious about the government's combating COVID. And Malone is a controversial guy. All right. And Rogan pretty much let Malone say what he wanted to say and didn't really have a counter to it. So that angered the left, particularly the far left, Neil Young and Crosby, Sills and Nash and uh, Joni Mitchell, all these, all these music people who, whose material are on Spotify, they said, no, we're not going to do Spotify anymore. We hate Joe Rogan. Kick him off because he's uh, not doing the responsible thing with COVID, number one. And then number two, somebody dug up some N-word stuff that Rogan said. OK, I, I mean, you know, you can dig up stuff on anybody, but you shouldn't say the N-word. And I know that the rappers say it, and I, I, but I, you shouldn't say it. Rogan apparently said it. He's apologized for saying it. Okay, I didn't get too deep into that. I don't really care very much about it. What I do care about is the argument about free speech. Are you looking for your next investment? Bill O'Reilly here. There are eight reasons to look at the NRIA Real Estate Development Fund. Stable monthly cash flow payouts with double-digit targeted bonus returns. They strategically develop in lower risk, high demand neighborhoods. Prime new construction is short on supply and high on demand. Diversification is safety from stock market risk. They have a short and long term strategy for returns today and down the road. Specifically designed pandemic hardened buildings. They are 15 year industry leaders with a proven track record. 
So if you've been sitting on the sidelines or want to diversify, please start your due diligence at nria.net or call 800-800-1414. That's easy, 800-800-1414. An offer of securities is only made by the NRIA Private Placement Memorandum. Read it first. Past performance does not guarantee future results. NRIA is a real estate development firm. Learn more at nria.net. All right, here is the final thought of the day. There are better days ahead socially in America. So I think this COVID thing is going to subside to the point where we're not going to be all fearful. We can go to the movies. We can go to the games. The kids aren't going to have to wear the masks in school. I think this is going to happen. All right. So socially, you're going to be a much happier country. But politics is never, ever going to get better in the short run. OK, two. There's two sides of two part part. All right. So politically, it's still going to be very intense. Midterm is coming up in November. They will be extremely important for the future of this country. The Democratic Party, very worried. The progressive movement, very worried. And they should be. Their policies are causing massive destruction to America. And Biden is a disaster in there. Uh, And he's not going to come back. All right. He's done. It's like a 42 year old baseball player can't hit the fastball anymore. They're not suddenly magically going to hit the fastball. Okay, so in this country, we're going to have some relief coming up in the spring and the summer. I've already booked a few trips. Okay, I need a break. You need a break. We all need a break. Okay, I'm hoping that my kids don't have to wear the mask. They're both in college. Still got to wear the mask. Hoping they get the mask off. I think that's coming soon. That'll be a tremendous relief for the kids. Not only in college, but high school and grammar school. Of course it will be. All right. And then we'll slowly get back to interacting without fear. Now, very possible that some other variant of COVID appears. That's possible. Okay, but the vaccine industry, if you saw the Pfizer uh, results today, the quarterlies, I mean, they're printing money. You know, those vaccines are gold. And these big farms, they're making, I don't know, it's not trillions, but billions of dollars, hundreds of billions of dollars on the vaccines. And now we're going to have a pill. That's coming. Um, So I'm optimistic that this COVID nightmare, not quite over, but we're at the end of it. I hope I'm right. As I said, I'm right about 90% of the time. So I hope this is one of those times. Thank you for watching the No Spin News. We'll see you tomorrow. I'm sure I'm not the only one who's noticed everything is getting more expensive. We are in the biggest economic crisis since 2008. With a government that's printing trillions of dollars, consumer prices at the highest we've seen in 30 years. Inflation certainly here. And if the government continues its out of control printing and spending, the dollar could continue its freefall and lose its coveted role as the world's reserve currency. While paper money will eventually have a shrinkage in value, there are real tangible things that will always maintain value. So how do you protect your money, your retirement, your savings? American Hartford Gold can show you how to hedge your hard-earned savings against inflation by helping you diversify a portion of your portfolio into physical gold and silver. All it takes to get started is a short phone call, and they'll have physical gold and silver delivered right to your door or put inside your IRA or 401k. Plus, tell them Bill O'Reilly sent you, and they'll give you up to 2500 bucks of free silver on your first order. So please don't wait. Call them now, 866-501-5201, 866-501-5201, or text BILL to 65532. Again, 866-501-5201, or text BILL to 65532. Bill O'Reilly is back on TV and only on The First. No Spin News, every weeknight at 8 p.m. Eastern, only on The First.